Hello, welcome to today's Daily Boost. This is yours truly, Dr. Charles and Nathan. I want you to hear this song, beautiful song. The word is a seed. When it's planted and watered, it grows to be great. I want you to listen to the song a little bit. And we're going to get started with the Daily Boost. You can be anything you want. You can achieve all your dreams if you only believe. You can achieve all your dreams if you only believe it. Are you ready? The word is a seed. I see Shanner's watching what us I all the way from Canada, Montreal, Canada. Welcome on board. Rhonda, God bless you. Hallelujah. I see Donna Prendergast. God bless you. We have Patrick. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my goodness, Patrick. He's got his, the daily boost in his office. Faith can move any mountain. Get ready for supernatural faith today coming to you. I see Vanessa is on. Hallelujah. This is wonderful. God is at work right now. And I see we have more people joining us. We have um, Orgelin. God bless you. Hallelujah. Gloria. God bless you. I see all of you are coming. I see Lucien. God bless you. Now listen to the song. This is your season. It's time, it's time to shine again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hallelujah. We are seasons and times. Get ready. This is your season. It's time to shine again. I want you to share this, this with others. Share this right now. Listen to this. Get ready. I'm ready for another daily dose of the Daily Boost. I hope you're enjoying this by Sister Sinatch. Beautiful song. I am ready. So I'm just seeing who is on board today. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Hallelujah. Don Adam, God bless you. I'm glad you joined me. And we have Chris. From Dexter, Iowa. Welcome on board. This is going to be a triumphant Thursday and the daily dose of your daily boost. Get ready. It is going to be be strong. Hallelujah. So get ready. Get ready. And Terry Williams, God bless you. Get ready. It is going to be great today. Get ready. And it's the word is coming to you today so we are ready I want you to listen to the song it is beautiful hallelujah this is your season get ready it's time to shine again it's time to shine again I'm talking to somebody here that is watching us today get ready this is your season in the world where the seasons and time this is your season so are you ready for the daily dose i am ready to roll i am ready to roll so well i'm going to make the song available to you this is um a beautiful song by sinatch a wonderful sinatch so get ready this is again dr charles i am talking to you 
from our studios here at the embassy. We are ready for an extraordinary day, Triumphant Thursday. The Bible declares that he causes us to triumph always. Do you realize that you were programmed to triumph? When God thought of you, when you were born again, and he came and possessed your very being, you were designed to be triumphant in everything you do. Do you, do you get that today? So I'll be sharing with you a quick recap from yesterday. And hopefully we have everybody on board from yesterday joining us. It is going to be another glorious day. Get ready for miraculous things to take place. Are you ready? Hallelujah. I see we have more people joining us. And um, I know now some of you know we are sharing it on different uh, Facebook um sites different facebook pages uh, we have the dr charles we have charles in defund and then we have christ love ministries so there are different people that are watching from different places so we're going to collate all of them i want to make sure we don't miss anybody today so i hope that you are ready to roll i am ready to go it is another day of wonders here at the studio something brilliant and something beautiful is taking place Praise God, I see. Hallelujah. I see pretty is on board. I see Ning is on board. It is your season to shine again. Hallelujah. So I am excited. I see Shamim, God bless you. I see Vanessa. So we have um, several Facebook pages we're sharing it on. That's why I cannot switch between them to see who is on. And um, hopefully we can collect all of them into one place and just share the link so that everybody can connect with the main page. But praise God. I'm talking about um, how to make your faith work. We're talking about 10 reasons why I cannot be sick. And I'm talking in this area of understanding how to make your faith work. And yesterday, we had a, a, a wonderful time talking about that. We were reading, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, For this reason, we also, since the day we heard about it, did not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We need to have insights into what God is doing today. Insights into what God is doing today. Yesterday, in the evening, if you did not listen to yesterday's programming in the evening, you need to listen to it. I talked about the golden key to success called understanding. We need understanding. I know people talk about wisdom is the principal thing. The Bible says that. But a man of understanding produces excellence. A person of understanding actually produces excellence. The Bible says a man of understanding is of, of an excellent spirit. Excellence is what separates you from others that are wise. Your excellence is what separates you because you have understanding. And I pray you can go and check out what we taught on last night in the, in the evening. I know it will be a tremendous blessing to you. So get ready. We are talking about how to make your faith work. How to make your faith work. The Bible declares that faith comes by hearing. As if faith can come by hearing. The same way doubt comes by hearing. You have to know what you listen to. Not everything you listen to, it's actually good for you spiritually. How can I tell whether what I'm listening to is God. Because if it's God, it will cause you to triumph over situations and circumstances. When God speaks to you, that would eliminate every fear and every doubt. You would know that from, from that. We are moving from promises. The promises of God to the realities of those promises. It's not enough. It's not enough to read the Bible and say, the Bible says... I don't want to say the Bible says, I want to say, look at me. I am the proof it works. I am the proof that it works. So I want to share with you some things that will help you. I say it yesterday and I say it again. It is great to have faith. Unbelief is sinking sand. Unbelief is sinking sand. The Bible says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful 
in every good thing, every good work you do. Do you realize God wants us to be fruitful? He wants you to produce results. He doesn't want you being barren. I hear some Christians say, I'm in the wilderness. When you're in the wilderness, you cannot produce your barren. But the Bible says, because of knowledge, you become fruitful, not barren. God does not put you, I have to say this very clearly, God has no reason to put you through a wilderness experience. What takes you into a wilderness experience is not God, is they are your decisions. They are your decisions. It is ignorance that takes you into a wilderness. If you don't know how to choose wisely, you end up in the wilderness experience. Don't blame it on God. It's just decisions you make. When you make a decision, you change your destiny. Decisions decides destiny. Whatever you choose, that empowers your direction in life. It's very simple. That's why the Bible says, choose ye today who are to, you are to serve. We never leave anything to just say it's fate. No, every individual has been given by God the power to choose. You choose God or you reject him. You choose Jesus as Lord and Savior or you can decide to reject him. It's the power of your choice. The Bible says, I've said before you, life and death, blessings and causing. Choose life that you may live. God wants us to choose life and then we can live. Hallelujah. There is something that when we are operating in this mindset, in this dimension, you begin to understand that things might happen around you, but never allow things to happen that will change your choice to walk in faith. The Bible says, it tells you in Colossians chapter 1 verse 10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. We dealt with that a little bit yesterday. That was wonderful. Hallelujah. I want to welcome all of you that are watching me. Ramsey, Annette, Friday, God bless all of you. Fidel, God bless you. Shadrach, God bless you. I'm glad you joined me today. I want to talk to you. You turn your fate loose. Satan cannot touch you. If you are born of God and you have the revelation of God, Satan cannot touch you. So what does it do? The first thing he will do, he will try to touch people close to you to get your focus off. He will try to attack everything around you so that you turn your eyes away from beholding Jesus. What you behold is what you become. You are changed by what you behold. Every time you're looking at the Word of God, you're changed to that Word. You begin to move in the same direction where you're looking. That's how faith actually works. The Bible declares that faith comes by hearing. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I am not ashamed of this good news. For in this good news, you will find the power of God. The power of God is locked up in good news. It says to the Jews and then to the Greeks. It says in verse 17, For in this gospel, in this good news, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. There is one dimension of faith to another dimension of faith. What do you mean? You have faith. The word of God comes to you. You have the faith of God. But the Bible says your faith can grow. You can actually grow your faith. Everyone has the seed, the measure of faith. But it's up to you to grow the faith. The Bible declares in Thessalonians, he said, I pray that your faith grows exceedingly. Okay, you got to pay attention to those words. Your faith grows exceedingly. Second Peter chapter 1, the Bible tells us in going from verse 3 to verse 4, it said, by this precious promises, it says, by this great, exceeding great, exceeding great, exceeding. That means by this exceeding great, that means the promises of God exceeds greatness. The least you can be is great. 
and you can go from great to greater to greatest. You can go up that way. And the Bible tells us that your faith grows exceedingly. It grows exceedingly. There is an exceeding growth in faith when you apply the word of God. When you take that word and take it into your spirit, begin to believe what God says. Do you know the quickest way to, to get the word of God working? It's you working the word, getting up and doing what the Bible says and see what the, what the enemy will do. He will be confused because he wants you to think about it and worry about it. All through the Bible, I find that when God deals with people, when he gives you his word, they act on it immediately. I've heard some people say, what about timing? What about the That's where you need understanding. Understanding brings wisdom, knowledge, and time to make decisions. That's what understanding brings. And I hope that this is helping somebody today. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that in Romans chapter 4, that Abraham was being, was completely persuaded. He was completely persuaded about what God has said. Hallelujah. So you understand, I said this month, it's the month of marvel. You are going to be experiencing different dimensions of things that you have never experienced before. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. He has called you not to failure. He has called you not to sickness. He has called you not to any of the things that religion always will equate. He never called you to failure. He called you to glory and to power, to virtue, to character of God, to becoming all that he is, the living expression of his glorious divinity on this earth. That's what you're called to be. That's exactly what God has designed for you to be. So most people don't understand that. So what do we do? We have made faith look like I have to have faith for this. I have to have faith for that. I don't have to have faith for healing and prosperity. I just have to have his faith and have the knowledge of his will. If I have faith, in the one who speaks, and I have knowledge of his will, I can operate that faith in anything I choose. I don't think healing different from prosperity. I don't think prosperity different from, from, um, from longevity or any of those things. Faith is faith. It's a revelation of God's perspective. That's what faith is. You see things the way he sees it. Jesus said, I do nothing but what I see. What I see the Father doing. Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed those things to you, but my Father who is in heaven has revealed those things. Revelation from the perspective of God, that's what it is. When you have the revelation, believing now means you tell God, I'm in sync with you, let's go and do it. You act on it and nothing can stop you. I hope you understand what I'm talking about today. You have faith that can change any situation you are facing. Hear this now. Decide today to live by faith. Practice faith. Act on the Word of God and you will see amazing things begin to happen. Hebrews 11, verses 17 to 19. I'm going to read those scriptures. Hebrews 7, verses 11, verses 17 to 19. I want to show you what the Bible tells us right there. Hebrews chapter 7, chapter 11, verses 17 to 19. I just want to make sure you get that clear. It says, by faith, when, is it by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and had, and he that had received the promise offered his only begotten son. In other words, by a revelation, he offered his only son. 
Now catch this now. This is how fate works. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall you sit be called. See the gravity of it. It seemed like he was sacrificing. When you're operating by faith, you find out it seems like you're sacrificing every known mental understanding of the order of the world. Did you notice the Bible tells you, it says, don't worry about food and clothing. That's what everybody worries about. But if you're going to be operating by faith, you cannot be worried. God knows you need those things. He tells you, the birds, they don't sow, they don't reap. They don't gather in barns. Matthew chapter 6, it tells you, they don't, go, they don't worry about those things, but even your father feeds them. But you sow, you reap. You should get more than just God's pittance, a little thing. You can get more. If the birds can, can be fed by God, definitely, my dear friends, God is going to feed you. Now, let me give you a final point to this. Hallelujah. You are going to learn something today that is going to shift the way you look at faith. You see, sometimes faith requires you to take the most precious I call it security that you have. Something that you hide behind. God will say, lay it down. Why is that? That's what faith requires. Because for you to get to the next dimension, sometimes you get to let go of your security of this present dimension. It's easy to just settle for where you are. In the Hebrews again, chapter 11, verse 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall your seed be. In Isaac. Now, God tells him, in Isaac your seed shall be. I will make you a father of many nations. Hallelujah. I will make you a father of many nations. And it's telling you something. Thank you, Philip. <laughs> I will make you a father of many nations. He tells you, let go of the thing that has become your security and step up to another dimension. In other words, when God speaks to you, when faith is an operation, everything in the physical might point against where you're supposed to go you will go against the grain that's why you get what others are not getting you step up and then you make a way for others to come and that that's what i call pioneering faith you build and others can come by your faith you can save a whole nation now hear this hallelujah see if you're going to operate in the things of god you have to let go of the security when god told me to come to the united states I wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to do everything my, fa my family wanted me to do. You know, it wasn't very convenient. If you're going to operate in the dimension of God, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot hold on to the past. You've got to hate where you are to qualify for where you're going. You see, God said to Abraham, give up your seed that everything depended on on that seed sometimes it could be your car sometimes it could be your children you see, God doesn't want you to kill your kids he wants to see where your love is and your loyalty God is proving to the world why you become the inheritor of the things about to give you you see God knows what you're gonna do you have to know what God knows listen to this again it says accounting that God was able to raise him again from the dead. He knew that if he killed his son, God was able to raise him from the dead. He knew whatever is your security, if you give up that security, God now becomes your security. He can restore what you secure you in a better way. That's what the Bible says. If you give up this, 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 for the sake of the gospel, you will gain what you gave up. That's called extra security. Extra security. Hallelujah. See, what I'm talking about today is how faith really works. How faith really works. Hear what it says. It says, accounting that God was able to raise him even from the dead. From whence, from whence also he received him 
in a figure. There is something that faith does. Faith sees. Faith is not blind. I've heard people say blind faith. No, no, no. Faith is a revelation. Faith is seeing from God's perspective. When you see things from God's perspective, somebody that is operating by faith, there is a confidence about them. They are quiet. They don't yell and scream. Oh, Lord, I, I believe. No, they just walk in a place and they smile. They said, let's get it done. And everybody's panicking. Jesus walked into the place where uh, Jairus' daughter was, was dead. He kicked out all the people crying. Why? Because when you have faith, there is rest that comes to faith. When you have faith, there is a rest that comes to faith. And you begin to operate by different rules hallelujah are you ready for this today i don't think you're ready for this folks because most times we have our confidence in what we put our confidence in the things around us it's called security god does not want you to be secure in your environment he wants you to be moved to another dimension your security is in the word hear this he received Isaac in a figure. Pay attention to that scripture. I'm going to read it again. It says, verse 19, I'm going to drill this a little bit. It says, according accounting that God was able to raise up Isaac even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. In other words, the way faith pleases God is you got to go beyond where you are and see where you ought to be. You've got to see where you're going. God told Abraham, go. Genesis chapter 12. Get away from the limitations. Come to a place I'm going to show you. I am going to make your name great. It all sounds nice and everything. And then it says, you will be the whole nations of the earth will be blessed by you and this guy you see you, you're going to be a father of many nations he doesn't even have one child the moment god speaks to you whatever you hear from god is already inside of you he is trying to reveal what he has buried in you the the bible says for we have in this earthen vessels treasures so god gives you his word to unlock the treasures the word is a key that unlock the, the things that God has put inside of you. And so when you know that it's inside of you, you get out there and do it. So God told me to come to the United States. What happened? I, I didn't have all the things lined up. People didn't tell me, well, I came here to, to coach in the soccer camp with Dr. Ron Ryder of Claren University in Pennsylvania. I came to be uh, one of the counselors in the soccer camp and uh, they gave me a scholarship to play uh, basketball and also had some, a bit of some academic scholarship. So when I came, I came by faith, got the scholarship while I was here and then the scholarship changed, but it didn't change my destiny. In other words, the scholarship was not what my confidence was. It was in the word of God. I told you when I came to this country, first thing that happened to me at JFK, I left my bags because you know, the mentality we had was America is God's country. Everything is safe in this country. Everything is fine. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And guess what? I kept my bag for one second to ask, how do I get transportation to Pennsylvania? I looked back. Somebody had stolen my bag. Can you imagine that as welcome to America? My first day coming here to live permanently. Guess what happened? My bag Everything I had stolen. The only thing I had was my passport and also I had my Bible, the clothing of my body. So when I arrived at Claren University, that was all I had. And at that moment, I had nothing. It wasn't God stripping me off. It was a thief trying to steal my stuff. God doesn't, doesn't do that. God is not a thief. Hallelujah. So I knew the enemy wanted to break my focus. As a young man, what did I do? I just took my Bible and I said, Lord, you sent me to this country. I know you keep your word. And that's all I said. And guess what? I arrived at Clarion University. The coach asked me, they picked me up and the coach asked me, where's your bag? I told him the story. I said, oh, my bags, everything was stolen at JFK. He was shocked. He felt so sorry, Dr. Ron Ryder. He felt so sorry for me. And he said, 
Oh, Charles, I'm so sorry. I said, it's okay. Two days. I came on, 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 uh, in the afternoon one day. That by the next day evening, Dr. Ron Ryder said, do you know people in, in Clar uh, Clarion, Pennsylvania? I said, no. He said, there are some people here looking for you. They are people looking for you. Hallelujah. And uh, the people came in. They had two bags full of brand new clothing. They said that they were in their place and God told them. God told them. Yes, God speaks. God told them, go to the basketball program at Claring University. There is a young man that just came from Africa. I sent him. Go and give him clothing. Go and buy new clothing. Take it to him. <sighs> and my coach looked at me a little surprised. He said, do you know this? I said, no. He said, they brought all this clothing for you. I said, hallelujah. Let me teach you how God works, how faith works. You see, on the other side of your obedience is the reward. You see, people that are good look at the risk. The great ones look at the reward. They go beyond the risk to see the reward. That's how things operate in the realm of the Spirit. For the joy that was set before Jesus, he endured the cross. Faith looks beyond the moment. Faith sees the final picture and bulldozes its way all the way to the final picture. That's what I'm talking about. I see the, the prophet Epha Emmanuel. Welcome on board. I see Anya, God bless you. When you have faith in God's word, you don't look at situations and circumstances. Yesterday, I mentioned five kinds of faith. You have faithlessness. Faithlessness. That means you have no understanding of faith. Then the Bible says little faith. Jesus said, O ye of little faith. And he says, great faith. He said to the centurion, I've never seen great faith like this in Israel. He said to the woman who touched him and who had the issue of blood, he says, great is thy faith. Hallelujah. And they are characteristics of great faith. And then he came and said, the Bible says, that Abraham being not weak, that's number four, being not weak in faith, there is weak faith. Hallelujah. And then he says, he was strong in faith. There is strong faith. What is the difference? Faithlessness means you are, you are always scared. You trust on the things you see. In fact, you don't even trust what you see. Everything seems to be shifting against you. Faithless generation. That means they are the people that are constantly in the panic mode. They, the earth is always ending. Everything is coming to an end. They have no faith in anybody, in themselves, in nothing. They are faithless. Then the little faith people, they have little revelation. They have little revelation. That's why they act the way they do. If you have a little revelation, then your faith expression is actually small. The little faith people, they're always panicking and they trust a little bit, but they panic. But the great faith, they have great revelation. Let's look at two of them. The woman with the issue of blood. She says, she said, she, this is the revelation. She said to herself, if I can touch, if I can touch, she had, she was fully persuaded. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is great revelation. She said, if I can touch, have you made up your mind? Are you completely persuaded about what God has told you to do when everybody's saying, oh, no, you can't? This woman had an issue of blood. A few things you need to understand. The first thing about having an issue of blood is you are considered unclean. By Leviticus, you are not supposed to come in the, in the crowd. When you come to the crowd, you will make everybody in the crowd unclean. This woman risked all of that. She had suffered for 12 years, suffered many things by many doctors. They had doctors back then and she could not get any better. She actually grew worse. And then something happened to her. Something happened to this woman. You see, every day we're dealing with things that doctors cannot cure. We deal with all the things. We've been, been to the doctors. We've been through the, the government, the banks. It seems like everything points away from a solution. You've been in a place where people reject you, all kinds of things. That woman had come to the 
end of her rope. When you have no more alternative, you're ready for a miracle. When you have alternative, we naturally will gravitate towards getting settled in those alternatives. But when you have no alternative, my dear friends, you are ready for a miracle. And this woman, she suffered many things from many doctors. She must have lost a lot of money. She must have been a rich woman. Suffered everything, all kinds of things from one doctor to another. In other words, the doctors passed her from one doctor to another. If you can't fix her, make an excuse, give her medication, take some more money, send her along to the next doctor, to the next doctor. Twelve years went by, she never got any better. But then she heard, faith comes by hearing. She heard about Jesus. What did she hear? She must have heard what he did for others. And she had this crazy idea. She's, because now people wait, the people would normally wait for Jesus to come and lay hands on them and to get healed. She figured because she was in the crowd. Can you imagine? They wouldn't let her come close to Jesus. Everybody's pressing. Then by the time Jesus would lay hands on her, they will see that she's unclean. Maybe the people will take her away and say, you cannot come around the rabbi with blood dripping from your body. You can't come around there. You, because a rabbi is supposed to be clean, not unclean. But this woman had an idea. She says, if I could touch, if I could touch, if I can just make contact with the hem of his garment, I know. You see, when you operate by faith, you go from believing to knowing. You just know that you know that you know. People will tell you, you are crazy. You don't understand. You know, science says this. These days that the, the government says this. All the laws are doing this. When you're operating in faith, you are defying every man-made natural law, anything. You are transitioning into the super superior to nature, the supernatural. You're coming to the supernatural, to the dimension of the spirit, where there are no limits. Here was this woman. Can you imagine how Jesus commended her faith? He said, she said, I know, I know, I know I will be healed. I know, not I believe, not I, 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 I hope I will get healed, not I, I hope. No, it was an assurity, an assurance in her statement that changed everything. What am I saying? Romans 4 verse 17, you keep reading all the way to verse 19. It says that Abraham was fully persuaded. He was fully persuaded. Are you fully persuaded, my dear friends? Or are you going between two different opinions? Are you fully persuaded? This woman understood what, how fate worked. And what did she do? The Bible declared that she came from behind the crowd, pushed her way through. All she had, she had a picture of what her action was going to be like. Have you ever thought about God speaking to you about becoming a multi-millionaire, becoming a kingdom financier? Have you seen the end picture first? You see, God never starts from the beginning. He starts from the end and goes to the beginning. You've got to start from the end. That's how faith sees things. Faith sees the end result and then bulldozes from the beginning all the way back to the picture that you have. That's why the Bible says he received Isaac in a figure, in a picture. I taught many years ago about creating faith's picture, seeing the finality. That's what the key is to faith. Can you see yourself healed? See yourself victorious? See yourself prosperous? What you see is what you get. Faith is not blind. Faith sees the invisible and faith does the impossible. That's what faith does. Hallelujah. When you understand how faith operates, I tell you, my dear friends, you are going to be getting maximum result. This woman came to Jesus, pushed her way through and touched her garment. And the Bible said, Jesus said, who touched me? My goodness, there is a touch of faith. There is an atmosphere of faith. There is something about faith. When faith is in operation, faith is not loud in its talk. Faith is not, oh, look at me. Oh, I believe I have it. No, faith acts. 
The action of faith is louder than the talk of faith. You have to understand this. The people that had faith, their actions spoke louder. This woman touched. And the Bible says that moment, the issue of blood dried up from its roots right to where she was bleeding. It dried up and Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? And there was a crowd that was there with Jesus. There, there's always a crowd. When there's a miracle, you have Jesus, you have his disciples, you have a crowd of people, the third group of people, a crowd of onlookers. And then in the midst of the crowd is a person that has faith in his word, that has faith in the man. It's not just having faith in his word. Let me explain to you. Let me teach you how to have faith in the word. Believe the man. When you believe the, the, the man, you will receive the lamb. When you receive the lamb, you can achieve your stand. Take your place. And when you achieve your stand, you can relieve the land. You can relieve the land. That's what I'm talking about today. That's what I'm talking about today. You are operating in a totally different space, not based on what people are saying. There is a picture on the inside of your spirit that cannot be shaken. You know there's a quiet confidence. You're not always worried and things like that. I said faith never calculates. Faith does not calculate. Faith does not say this is what, this is what I'm going to do like this. No, faith says I know. I know, I know, that's what you have to do today, my dear friends. Believe God for big things. Go from believing to knowing. The key from believing to knowing is your action. The day you start acting on what God says is the day tremendous things begin to happen. It does not matter what the situation is. I say to you yesterday that faith does not consider the situation. I'll get, that, get to there quickly in a short time. This woman came and touched Jesus, and Jesus said, Who touched me? He says, Because the Bible says, Because virtue came out of him. Power came out of Jesus. Power, there was a power release from him. The actual translation of the word, Who touched me, is, Who has made a demand on my abilities? The problem with people, they don't understand that when you operate in the word of God, you are placing a draw like electricity, connecting the light, connecting something and making a draw on God's ability. It is God at work in you, both to will and to do, to will, the willingness and the doing is all God working. Let him walk through you and I tell you, you are going to be operating without fear. you be operating without fear. Are you with me today? I know you are watching from different places. I see Mary Jo, God bless you, sweetie. I see Marine and Athena, God bless you, my wonderful friends. Hallelujah. And Caroline, God bless you. And ma'am, God bless you. I'm so glad you joined us today. Now, let me get down. Let me drill this in a little better. This is what happens. This woman came and Jesus said, Who touched me? Who made a demand on my ability? And the Bible declares that the disciple were wondering who broke the protocol. You see, when faith is on the scene, every protocol is suspended. Write that down. When faith is on the scene, every protocol is is suspended. Jesus is passing by. Here comes blind Bartimaeus screaming. Who is that? They said it's Jesus. He cried, called out to Jesus, thou son of David. In other words, he broke every protocol because when faith is on the scene, when faith is displayed, every protocol is suspended. Everything suspends for faith because faith now becomes the protocol when they said be quiet he cried out the more and the bible said jesus stood still i'm telling you when faith is in display everything stands even jesus will stand still and acknowledge and bring faith to the forefront blind Bartimaeus came he said bring him tell him cheer up he called thee that's the jesus of the bible and when they, when they called him, 
something amazing happened and he said to him he told him receive your side he got us miracle and he was done think about the woman with the issue of blood when she came the protocol was broken who touched him and I see, I can imagine the disciples of Jesus with their swords and you know, they, they were his, uh, his personal bodyguard immediately. I mean, those guys were kind of rough, you know. I think about those disciples of Jesus, a bunch of wild sailors and a, a bunch of crazy guys. You know, Peter cut a man's ear. Jesus said, buy a sword. Hallelujah. Can you imagine his inner circle? They were tough guys. And here was the protocol broken. F see, Protocol is suspended when faith is in display. Protocol is suspended when faith in God's word is displayed. The greatest joy you can give God is to believe him. The greatest pain you can give him is to doubt what he says. Jesus said to the disciple, why do you doubt? He said to Peter, why do you doubt? He was walking on the water and he began to look at the situation. He began to look at the situation and that was the problem with him hallelujah that's what i'm talking about today how to make your faith work i hope that this is helping somebody turn that situation around 10 reasons why i cannot be sick i tell you you see when your body is pulsating with the very life of god you, i'm not talking about being religious and saying i pray today and i i fast no i'm talking about when your very being now is possessed by god no sickness has a place, a room in your body to come in. All the doors are closed to anything that is not divine. Hallelujah. Now, let me get down a little bit and drill this a little bit. Here's Jesus. Protocol is broken. A woman touched him and he stood for that woman. And the disciples searched around, found the woman. Can you imagine how rough the guy's might have been that day you know sometimes people with a little power get a little drunk and carried away and then they want to prove that they are tough guys i said they dragged the woman to jesus and she must the bible says she was fearing and trembling now for you to be fear be, be afraid and trembling tells me two things number one the approach of those that came to pick you up they came like mafia style, like thugs, just dragged the woman. You said, you touched him? And they were thinking, oh, you broke protocol. But when she came and just saw the look on Jesus' face, I can imagine Jesus just was smiling and just shaking his head, just looking at her. He said, you touched me? <laughs> and the lady said, yes. And the Bible says, and then she told him all the truth. It must have been an amazing scene because when she just took one look at his eyes, she knew it was okay. Faith now took place, took precedent over the protocol. Hallelujah. Whenever faith shows up, every protocol is suspended. And faith now becomes the protocol of the day. Hallelujah. That's what happened. I see Sifiso. Bless you, my son. I love you. I've missed you guys in South Africa. Now, Hear what the Bible declares. You got to pay attention to this. I'm talking about how to make your faith work. How to make your faith work. We've talked about it. You got to go listen from the beginning last week and this week. We are really building this thing up so that you now can operate wherever you are, whatever situation you find yourself in. Hear this. I said yesterday, one of the statements I made yesterday, I said to you, faith does not adjust itself it does not adjust itself to the situation faith changes the situation to adjust to faith's dimension that's how it operates that's exactly what happens here's the woman she comes to jesus and she told him everything and jesus said really i can imagine the conversation you mean you did all of that she said yes and jesus says woman Oh, great is your faith. Oh, wow. What a great revelation. What a great revelation you have. She, and they say to her, go and be made whole. I like that. You know, can you imagine that lady now was a center of attention? Jesus delight sh was shining on her now and said, look at you. You are worthy of my attention you are worth it you are first class he said cheer up he called it the that's what they say about bartimaeus and i thought i'd give you another example of a person with great faith or great revelation the centurion 
came to Jesus. And uh, the Jewish people, you know, they had all their strategy. They said, this man is deserving because he built something for us. You know, religious people have their angles. Jesus will come to you regardless of that. The thing that impresses him is not because you built a temple. The thing that impresses him is that you came. When you come to Jesus, he doesn't cast you away. He comes to this man and he said, come on, let's go to your house. The man said, my servant is at home dying. He's sick. He's, he, I know if you come and then you lay your hands on him, he shall live. So Jesus said, let's go. He didn't care whether the man built a place or not. He said, let's go. And they were sort of going. And the man must have had a nice little conversation with Jesus. It wasn't silence. It wasn't silent from where he told Jesus the problem and when they got his hope. They must have had a conversation. And while they were talking and Jesus was talking to the centurion, he must have been sharing some nuggets of the kingdom of God. He must have been saying something to the man. He said, oh, don't worry, your servant is going to be fine. You know, and the man was hearing it. And faith was building in the man. And then when they came close, the man must have heard enough. He said, Jesus, come on. I don't want to waste your time anymore. <laughs> I'm a man that understands authority. I say to one, come, and they come. I say to another one, go, and they go. I say to this one, do this, and they do this. He said, I understand. The universe will listen to you. It, I'm not worthy to house you in my house. But what I can say to you, just say your word. Say your word that the word you speak has enough power to go from where you are to where my servant is. I know. Here we go again. He says, I know my servant shall be healed. He did not say, I believe. He said, I know. The woman with the issue of blood says, I know when I touch him, I know I will be healed. You come to a place of knowing and that's where faith is ignited once you know means you have seen it you go mm, i see i know now how it works and that's what i'm talking about today i hope that this is helping you today get a hold of how faith operates here was the man the man did the centurion he decided now okay i'm going to do something i'm going to do something just say the word and jesus looked at him he must have just marvelous it i've not seen faith like this not in Israel. I've not seen the, the Jewish people that are supposed to know this thing, don't know it. I have not seen faith like this. Not in Israel. He said to the man, as you have believed, it is done. At that very moment, at that very moment, his servant was made whole. That is called great revelation. What did this man know? He knew that God is in his word. When the word goes forth, all of heaven backs up that word. All that God speaks in that word is energized to perform what God says. The Bible says the word of God does not return void, but it goes to accomplish. That is called revelation. It goes to accomplish all that it has been sent to do. So the centurion knew by revelation that once you speak the word, the power, the package of that word will always deliver what it is sent to do. Today, I speak to you. You are coming out of that cocoon where you've been wrapped up by situations and circumstances. Today, something beautiful, something big is happening on the inside. You're breaking free from that fear, from that doubt, from that sickness, from that disease, from that cloud of 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 the dark cloud of, of, of sadness you've been in, you're breaking free from me today because the joy of the Lord is coming to you. That joy is your strength today. I'm talking about how to make your faith work. What happened to this centurion? And the Bible says from that hour, his, his servant was made whole. What happened to the woman with the issue of blood? She started a movement. The next chapter, you see, Mark chapter 5 was where it happened. And Mark chapter 6, the Bible says, they began to carry in beds and in mats to wherever they were. And they sought that they might touch Jesus. Chapter 5, she touched. Chapter 6, everybody starts touching. Faith always starts and triggers a whole avalanche of victories for others. 
Do you realize today that your faith, just by you operating in the reality of the word, it will open up a door for others to look at you as the example and begin to have victories in your life. The destinies of many people are tied up to your walk of faith, to your operating by faith. The good news is your faith is the faith of the Son. You are operating by the faith of the Son. Faith never adjusts to the situation. Great faith, great revelation. The Bible says, Abraham was not weak in faith, number four. The fourth thing about faith is he was not weak. Weak faith always looks at the situation. Weak faith will say, well, according to the doctor, well, according to the five senses, that's what science says, or well, um, according to the bank account, well, according to my banker, or well, according to my contractor, well, you, there are a lot of wells that you have to go through, well, and the buts, but we can't do this, but it's impossible. You hear those things. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4, it tells you very clearly that Abraham, being not weak in faith, did not consider. Why? Great faith, no, weak faith, considers the situation. Weak faith always is thinking about, well, I, I, need, I have this, I have that, I need to cover this, I need to cover that. No, 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 my dear friends. Real Bible faith does not consider I didn't say it does not pay attention to it. All I'm saying is it sees it. It does not deny the existence of those impossible situations. It doesn't just consider it. He did not con consider the deadness of Sarah's, Sarah's womb or himself being so old in age or the deadness of the womb to plant the seed. He didn't consider those things, but he was fully persuaded. And against hope, he believed in hope. That's what great, that's what strong faith will do. He was strong. He was strong. Strong faith always is strong in the word and it gives glory to God. Today, your faith is being revived. Today, something new is happening. I see Apostle Ali is on. Hallelujah. Today, your faith is coming alive. Today, your faith is growing. Today, you are beginning, I dare you to begin to believe for big. I dare you to believe, to, to soar at the, on the edge of big. Stop dreaming small. Stop dreaming based on what your money can afford. Stop dreaming based on where, where your, 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 the things around you can afford. Stop, I dare you to begin to believe big things so crazy, so ridiculous that you have to need God to come in. Dream so big that God has to fit into your, into your dream. Dream so big that others get so excited about a dream and join you and you can champion a cause and do something wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that this is helping somebody today get a hold of what I'm talking about. If you can only believe anything is possible to anyone that would believe that today. Hallelujah. I see Lucille. You today, you're coming out of that cocoon. Today, you're coming out. Linda is on here. Today, you are coming out of the limitations that you have been boxed in. Today is your day of liberation. Your faith, there's a rhapsody of faith. There's an exhilaration, an excitement of your faith today. And it begins now. So I pray that today this has blessed you. Hallelujah. We are doing a little extra every day just to catch up for the days we are not being on, on, on the air. But today I want to encourage you. We are dreaming big with you. We are standing in agreement with you. Uh, and uh, we are going to do Q&A next week, I said. On a Thursday afternoon, we are going to do Q&A. And uh, send your questions this week. That way we have them lined up for next week. Hallelujah. So get yourself ready. Something incredible will take place. It is triumphant. Thursday. I want to encourage you today, begin to dream so big, begin to dream ridiculous. You know, somebody said, oh, why are you saying we should dream ridiculous dreams? Dream a dream that others will laugh at you, but when you accomplish it, they will marvel at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, 
When we said we we're going to have a data center, I know I don't think anyone really got the idea, but I like to dream crazy things. I like friends that dream crazy things. I like to hang around people that would dream so big that would defy your reason. You know you have to depend on the word of God. It says, as far as your eyes can see, hallelujah, as far as your eyes can see, it's yours. And the Bible says, hallelujah. It said, look up, not down. Look up. It said, if you can count the stars, so shall your seed be. Hallelujah. That promise was made to Abraham also. It's made to you. Believe that. The promise that was made to the fathers, the Lord has fulfilled in the Son. He sent Jesus to make sure that the blessings of Abraham can come to the Gentiles by faith. Hallelujah. You are locked in, you are loaded, and you're ready for your major breakthrough. Are you excited about that yet? Hallelujah. God is at work in you, but to will and to do of his good pleasures. Hallelujah. I pray that you've, you've received something today. We are going to come back tomorrow. We're going to come. We're going to continue. Tomorrow is Friday fire. We're going to come full force. It is going to be glorious and your faith will be working. Today, take out your iPad, your notepad or whatever pad you have and begin to write dreams. Don't worry about the amount of money. Don't worry about those things. I remembered, I, I, was, tell, I was telling you about my experience coming to the United States. And when we came here, before we realized it, God was moving. Before we realized it, we have been to many nations. 89 nations and we are counting. God is doing unusual things in our day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that today's, today's uh, teaching has helped build you up, help you focus again and dare to believe for big things. Begin to believe for big things. You see, begin to receive your Isaac in the figure. That means see at the end of everything what God's promise really looks like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go from I believe so to I know so. You've got to go beyond that. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Abraham was strong in faith. Why was he strong in faith? He put the word of God before anything else. He meditated on the word of God. He formed a picture on the inside of what God said. Hallelujah. He knew how to act on the word. He didn't just stay there and prayed. He acted on the word of God. Decide to live and practice this lifestyle of trusting God. I didn't say believe in God. I'm talking about believing God. Dare you, I dare you to believe God, to believe so big that even your family will call you crazy. You know, they won't call it crazy when it works, but they'll call it crazy when you dream. See, it happened to Joseph. You're not the first one. It happened to many people. You're not the first one. So get yourself ready. People might call you crazy for a short season, but they won't call you crazy when you're reigning in life. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. And then decide to live by love. Galatians says in Galatians 5, 6, it said faith work it by love. And uh, the most important thing, my friend, is making sure Jesus is your anchor. He is the author and he is the developer of your faith. Hebrews 12, verse 2, he is the author and the finisher of your faith. When you keep your eyes on him, faith begins. When you keep looking at him, faith grows. And as you keep your eyes on him, faith is rewarded. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray today has helped you and challenged you. And we are going to give you an opportunity as we always do every time we come here to you. I, I don't know, should I do a weekly boost or you want a daily dose of the daily boost? If you're going to do weekly boost, I can do it once a week. That's fine too. But tell me, I want you to write right now and tell me what you want us to do. Hallelujah. You're coming out of that shadow that has kept you all this years. Today is your day for something marvelous to take place. So get yourself ready. God is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So I want to encourage you today, wherever you find yourself today, I want you to do something. I want you to begin to write those things about whether there's a weak doctor here or this, those things are being crushed by what you believe. 
You see, when you start believing in witches and things like that, they begin to dominate your space and your spirit. Believe the big things about God and those demons will back up when they see you. I said there's an audacity of faith that comes into place. Hallelujah. I said when faith shows up, all the protocols are suspended. Faith becomes the protocol of the day. You got to write that down. When faith is displayed, I'm telling you, people would marvel at you and they'll look at you and say, my God, I want to be like you. Thank you for showing us how faith works. When you do that, you create an, a, 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 a pool for others to come through. I pray that this has helped you today. I am so excited you joined me and um, I give the opportunity as we always do. For you to become an investor in what we're doing we are reaching to the nations of the earth we want to get our materials out we are still we still have our book project we are still believing for about forty thousand dollars to print so many books they want us to print a lot at one time and we can distribute it to many nations as a seed for those nations we want we need your help we need your help to be able to get done that's why we encourage you today to become an investor in what we're doing you know we're talking to some of the people that are printing it different printers different prices some of them we have put some some things just for, to print a few more copies that we can hand out to people we want to invest this books this material CDs DVDs every single year by the hundreds of thousands to people everywhere around the world in different languages we have about 56 books and uh, our international director, she's doing a great job coming up with all of those things, you know, putting them, making sure they're in place and all of the team that's working to make sure it happens. I want to say thank you to all of them that are working diligently to make sure we get these things done. But I want to say thank you again for joining us. I want you to go sow your seed for the good news to go around the world. Go to Christlove.org, click the donate button and you'll be able to sow our seed there. And thank God we have other options. If you are, if you have PayPal, you, we have a PayPal option. You will see it right on the screen. It says paypal.me forward slash Charles and Defon. And we can make an investment to get the gospel out, uh, out there. The Bible says when your heart makes you willing, hallelujah, and you, 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 you're convinced about that, you release a seed. And God is the Lord of the harvest. He will multiply the seed sown. Hallelujah. He will multiply whatever you sow. And uh, we have another option. You can, you can come. You can do it by, um, by mail. You can send our check or money order to Christ Love Media, P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. It helps get the gospel out to the nation. I believe that we have one more option, which is the cash, the cash app for those, especially in the United States. It's right at the bottom there, the cash app. I know you have the dollar sign and then Charles and different. It comes right into the kingdom of God. And let's get this good news out. Every day we get up in the morning, that is our priority. Ministering love that heals a hurting world. I want to thank you all again for joining us. I want to say to Annette, Sammy, um, Rhonda, Chris, uh, Henry. Hallelujah. We see all the wonderful folks that have joined me here. Ning. I, I know I'm going between many pages because we are on different <laughs> different pages. Now we have um, we have a lot of people here also. We have uh, Princess Rika. We have um, I see um, Lazio says daily definitely daily boost. <laughs> Lucy <laughs> and Maranatha daily Hallelujah Hallelujah. Biegit Linda. And the sunshine just joined us. We're wrapping up. And we have faith. Hallelujah. And Pidgey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I want to say I love all of you so dearly. Thank you for, for coming and taking the time to listen to me. I pray that this has helped you and has put a bounce in your spirit.